Every coffee needs a lotus. All right, welcome back to the second part of our free learning, our free webinar. And this is uh, brought to us by our beloved Ariva Academy. We thank resource speakers like uh, Ms. Roch. If it's okay, if first name basis na lang tayo. Yes, please. <laughs> okay, I so uh, Roch. Okay, thank you so much, Roch, for, for doing this pro bono. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we appreciate I, it I a lot. I love the help. Uh, and, and it shows how, how much you were able to touch these people. They have a lot of comments. For Zoom participants, please type in your questions at the Q&A box. And then lang yan. We encourage you to do Zoom live questions. So of the hundreds of participants we have in this webinar, you can click the raise button. Raise button. And then lang yan. So that we can hear you. And for our Facebook live viewers, type in your questions on the comment section. And we'll be more than glad to answer your questions. Are you ready now, uh, Ms. Roach? Yep, I'm ready. Sige. Let's just greet our viewers and our participants, webinar participants from all parts of the Philippines. So let's do this alphabetically. We have one participant from Albay, Legaspi City. Ooh, I've never been to Albay. <laughs> and we yet. have seven from Angela City. Yes. Oh, Pampanga. <laughs> Like any Abbey, I know. So, Bacolod City, we have two. Baguio City, we have two. Cagayan de Oro City, four. Cebu City, three. Dagupan City, two. Davao, six. Davao City, six. Wow. Tumagete City, 12. They always, uh, I mean, on a daily basis, <laughs> no lower than 12 yeah. participants. Thank you for your nice. support, Tumagete. Hmm. Iloilo City, one. Negros Oriental 1, and Pampanga 14. Hello. Ang dami mong fans. Miss <laughs> Roch, ha? Pampanga. <laughs> Diba? Kasi oh, we have Pampanga. 7 from Angeles, and then we have 14 from 14. Pampanga. So you do the math. Pangasinan 1, Siquijor 3, Tarlac 1, Zamboanga City 2. Nice. Okay, so. Diba? Imagine. <laughs> Not only that. This will be uploaded on YouTube and millions, millions more people would be able to see this. Thank you so much for your generosity. Not intimidating at all. <laughs> it's a million. <laughs> <laughs> well, this to encourage you. Yes. <laughs> and affirm how important your role is today. So the first question we have is a Q&A box. What is your, what is, what if, it's not what is, what if you're watchful, what if you are watchful of your tone, your pitch, and cadence, but the receiver still reacts differently. Um, so I, I've so there were so many hats that I had to wear 
in so many facets mm-hmm. of an organization. Um, and I get this. I truly, I truly get this because um, there are people who have such a hard show and it's so difficult to get through to them. Um, want, probably explore. You might want to explore um, that one of the reasons why the receiver still reacts differently towards your message is because masakit to, but maybe they don't trust you enough. Mm. the sender um and so what you want to do in those kinds of cases is um what i do is when i can't seem to get through to somebody and i can't seem to establish that trust between me and that person um i try to uh, work with another coworker or somebody okay. else who will help me get through to that person because again it's all about trust um communication leadership will always be based on trust mm. you you Very. won't get a follower you won't have a follower unless they trust your consistency um and unless your consistency is there they might not ever and i'm hoping that that's not the case but they might have a very difficult time uh to trust your message so that could be one uh one example um maybe there was something that happened uh in the past where um you said something you did not know maybe that's a Uh, that's a time for you to start trying to open up those communication lines and get that conversation going so that you can start uh, you can start kind of reconciling how you can communicate together um, going forward. Um, but then maybe uh, there are times when the leader is new and mm-hmm. the trust just really hasn't been established yet. And so um, if your uh, if your pitch tone, Um, and your cadence still won't work, then maybe just maybe they just don't know you yet. And so okay. you have to take time. And that's the reason why um, when Simon Sinek said, pick up the phone and ask them how they're doing, that totally resonated with me because mm-hmm. that's the first step to gaining somebody's trust. Yeah. I love what you, men- what you mentioned, uh, Ms. Raj. Mm-hmm. I love it. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Communication really is all about trust. Leadership is also about is also about trust. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So having a bridge or a conduit or, or somebody to to speak in your behalf is a good thing. Yes. Now we have a Zoom live question. Let's welcome none other than Karen Kiamko. Hi, Karen. <laughs> Hi. Good afternoon. Hi. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Yes, we can hear you, Mom Karen. You can already hear you. Mom Karen. She might not hear us. Can can you hear us, Mom Karen? Okay. So it seems like we're having some technical glitch, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. So we can always call back, Mom Karen. In the meantime, let's proceed to the second question on our Q and A box. So and, and I'm not sure if it's a question. Miscommunication when it comes to reading text messages, comments, and instructions. I think it's a comment. It's a comment, no? Or unless it's a question. If it is a question, then maybe the mm-hmm. question could be. Could there be miscommunication when it comes to reading text messages, comments, and instructions? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you're reading it, um, you're reading from your tone of voice. You're reading from your pitch. You're reading from your cadence. And so it's so easy to misinterpret text messages or mm-hmm. anything that's written that that is in a written form without the tone. And that's the reason why um, my the basis for all of my training ever since I became a trainer was Um, it's not what you say, but it's how you say it all the time. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Next question. How do you deal with a new boss who always m- mentions in emails, meetings, there's many loopholes before he came in, which most know he is not just aware of the existing process. You think it is due to stress in current situation, ECQ, and working from home from anonymous attendees? I'm sure you can read it. Yeah, I can. Hearing. It could be, it could be so many things. Um, but what's uh, I think what the overall 
tone here is this is probably someone who is struggling or this is a leader who is probably struggling to pick up from wherever the previous leader left off. And so um, it, I don't know what the entire scenario is, but mm. let's say, for example, the scenario is where, um, and I've done this, I inherited a team mm. without getting the proper endorsement from my predecessor. So I did not know what was going on, how decisions were made, why things were done in the way that they were done and so on and so forth. And so I struggled at that time to pick up the pieces because I didn't know how things were, were decided on. Mm -hmm. And so do I think that it is due to stress in current situation, ECQ and working from home that could be added. So mm -hmm. it could be an additional factor. It could, it could be an additional consideration, but it's not, um, I don't think, and again, I don't have the bigger picture, but I don't think that the ECQ and working from home is the end all be all reason oh, okay. for this leader to uh, to keep on mentioning what was either done or not done in the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, uh, Ms. Roach. Mm -hmm. I think uh, going back to what you mentioned, I, I loved it when you said Simon Sinek not only is asking for leadership but followership. Yes. Maybe they can support this leader. I agree absolutely. Thank you for bringing that up, Howell. It's mm. it's all about. Um, and I used to. Uh, for an entire week, I was following, um, I was assisting um, two, uh, two leaders or two trainers who trained extreme ownership. If you have read the book Extreme Ownership, um, there were two trainers um, in my previous organization who were flown in, um, there were the, who flew in those two trainers and mm -hmm. started talking about extreme ownership. And the common question was, what if your own boss does not have extreme ownership? What if they I... don't own up or are not, um, you know, um, they're not acting responsible for whatever decisions that were either made in the past? Kahit na hindi nila decision, kasi yeah. they, still, they still represent the entire company. Eh? And so what you want to do in those situations is, again, the only person who you can control is yes, yourself. yourself and so when when that time comes what you want to do is you want to step up and be mm -hmm. the leader that you want that leader to be wow well, miss universe yung sagot mo miss rocha kulang lang po ako sa katangkaran <laughs> hindi pero ikaw naman you are beautiful inside and out and that's enough thank you now, uh, we have one live question mm -hmm. from gino kabigao gino I know this person. <laughs> oh you know this person good yes i do Okay, Sir Gino. Hi, hello. Hey, Gino. Hey, Miss Raj, how are you? Great presentation. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, um, yeah, I have a question when it comes to uh, types of events due to the work from home situations that many of us are facing. Mm -hmm. uh, what type of, uh, when it helps for help with communications, are there any sort of events or any sort of um any, yeah, any sort of events that can help out when it comes to making uh, communication um, good, <laughs> keeping communications, uh, you know, at home when it comes to this. So do you have any suggestions when it comes to events where people can, you know, enhance communication skills or such? Because I know that was a big part of your presentation, communication. Is it to keep communication going between leadership and the or and everybody else or... Um, is it training people how to yeah. communicate? Which I guess one would both, it uh, both, just to sort of like keep people engaged. So I guess, like, you know, mm -hmm. making sure that communication is uh, constant between uh, employees, between their bosses and employees. So mm -hmm. are there any sort of engagement factors that can help out when it comes to making sure communication lines are still open during these times? Good question. Um, so this is mixing up the the trainer and the event planner in me. Wow. Um, you know me too well, Gino. <laughs> and so um, <laughs> yeah. I have literally I have seen a lot of organizations um, popping up because I've been monitoring all of the virtual events that have been happening. And in the event planning industry, um, there a lot of the conversations have been we need to pivot to virtual. Um, there are a lot of de debates on what events can be done virtually and what cannot. Um, but I have been I have been seeing organizations where they're doing um, Zoom rooms and like happy hours. And I'm sure that you see this too, Gino. And so 
um, the reason why I, I bring up those kinds of engagement activities, because you can only do so much um, in a virtual world. So um, I've seen either happy hours, people bringing their own drinks, like, for example, Howell probably has his own cup of coffee. I have my mug of um, tea with um, Pampanga, proud, mm. <laughs> with Pampanga on my mug. <laughs> Um, and so it could be like, and I've seen this tagged as well, E as in letter E, new. <laughs> um, and so maybe to keep the lines, cause again, I'm going to go back to the basics of communication. You cannot um, keep the communication going unless there is trust. And so I think one of the best ways that you can do it um, right now is what if, for example, we ask some key leaders to have like those coffee sessions online with um, some, let's say, employees, right, um, from different departments. And they can, it could be sort of like a smaller town hall or of some sort where it's a casual conversation and they just talk about like what's going on in the world and so on. Because um, even though you communicate, even if your format is great, even if um, the graphics are wonderful and it's beautifully laid out. People are not going to absorb that information unless they absolutely trust the source um, and unless they absolutely trust the leaders that the message is coming from. And so I would say that. I would say um, the types of engagement events that you'd probably want to do are those pockets of events where I've, invi I've, I've been invited to a party where there are multiple DJs um, playing um, at different hours and stuff. And it's like a club of some sort, but then it's not really a club. So I don't really feel it. And there are so many people, but there are no conversations, right? And so in an organization, if you want to keep the conversation going, you need to make sure that the trust is consistent. And so if you want to make sure that the trust is consistent, you have to keep it in smaller groups where the leaders can hear and listen to what the rest of the organization is trying to say. I hope that helps. I'm not sure if I hit the nail on the head. That helps. Okay. That was great. Great answer. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sir Gino, for the question. And thank you, Mamraj, for the answer. Mm -hmm. Now, Belen Casho from our chat box has something to say. As a leader, mm -hmm. when one of your subordinates doesn't go along well with you and always find faults, will you still start the conversation with that person on a personal level I can't find the question so can you say that one That's, more time um, as a leader when one of your subordinates doesn't go along well with you yeah. and always finds faults mm -hmm. will you still start the conversation with that person on a personal level I fault can. finder yes so I can talk from experience Staff. on this oh, good 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 <laughs> So uh, I kind of little I I got kind of a little bit excited with that question because I've I have experienced this many many times where mm -hmm. even if I can come across as um, as approach approachable and accommodating to many there are still some who just um, don't get my energy at all they, mm -hmm. we don't we don't um, resonate at the same frequency at all and that's perfectly fine because there are people like that naman talaga. Um, if there's a fault finder in your team who you just simply cannot keep on communicating with, I'm going to go back to my first answer or to my answer to the, I think the first question, first question, I think it was, um, or the second, um, where I will try to have a conversation still, I will still try to open up a conversation. I'll be very mm -hmm. honest and say, um, and I have done this before where I, I was very honest to say, Hey, I feel like there's a disconnect between mm -hmm. you and me and I wanted to make sure that I give um, you and I a shot at trying to figure this out and how we can move forward with communicating with each other because we will be working together um, going forward. But I just wanted to make sure that, you know, that you know how I feel about it. And I'm interested um, to find out how we can work this together. Because once you own what you feel, hindi toturoan na, wag kang magtuturo na, don't blame the other person and say, because you did this and you're doing this to me. You're rolling your, your eyes at me and you did this, 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 and that. Um, what you want to do is you want to mirror it from what you, you're feeling and what you're doing and say, I'm trying to reach out to you. Um, however, I'm, I feel like every time that I do, I feel like there's this wall between you and me. And I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct my perception if I'm wrong. 
Um, but that's how I feel. And I wanted to make sure that I'm clarifying that with you so that I'm not basing it on assumptions. Maraming namamatay sa akala. Mm. And so y- the answer is, yes, I would. Um, I would attempt to have that conversation. And even if after that conversation, it still is icy, mm. um, that's the time when I would go to somebody else who I can trust, who is very trustworthy, very mature enough to handle a conversation like that. Wag yung, wag yung, ano ha, wag yung may intention na i-cheese me sa lahat na, uy, si ganito, hindi siya nagkakasundo with somebody mm. else and stuff like that, right? And so, I go to somebody else who I trust can help me um, get through to that person if my message just doesn't come across either clearly or they just don't want to listen to me. Thank you for sharing your experience with us. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, uh, Jose Oberoya Jr., can you, can you please flash the message, <laughs> or you can just uh, you can just share it with us? Yeah, is, uh, is it about courage? If I'm, uh, uh, the, the one for desktop was desktop. your courage you just, is greater see? than any fear. Be brave. You got this. Wow. Yeah, I can still remember. Really. <laughs> if you if you want a copy of it again, you can go to YouTube and do a screenshot. If if not, then. Um, my email address was on the mm. last slide in case any of you want to reach out to me personally. Thank you, Ms. Roch. Mm-hmm. Ben Francis Rances. Yes. How do you inspire your teammates to remain optimistic? Ang context niya, the upper management, slightly, well, I love the word slightly, <laughs> puts pressure on your sales at a critical time like this pandemic. Uh, um... So it's a tricky question because uh, I also recently attended another webinar where there mm. were sales experts. Naman. And so um, to be honest with you, everybody, um, this entire time, I think I've attended one too many webinars where I don't even know where I'm getting all of this information, mm. but I'm learning so much. Um, and so what they consistently say um, among the sales experts is um, – you need to make sure na during this time, it's, it's not about the remaining optimistic. It's not about that at all. Um, what you want to do is you want to go back to your company's mission. Why do you mm. exist as an organization? Why are you selling um, either your services or your products? How is it going to benefit um, whoever you're, uh, audience is whoever your uh, your target market is, um, and also for those who uh, and I can I can relate to this only because I've heard of stories where um, and I've attended some sessions where it seemed like a sales pitch to me, and so in so there's what they call one sales expert actually quoted and said and called it the COVID cloak. The COVID cloak is. Um, okay, for the first two minutes, I'm going to be talking about COVID, the impact of uh, whatever mm. this crisis is on all of us. But then here's our usual pitch. Here's our usual product. Here's okay. our usual whatever. Um, and so what I would do, or what I would say to this is um, inspiring your teammates. It's not about inspiring your teammates to remain optimistic. It's inspiring your teammates about why your organization is offering those products and services and how it could help people become better even in a time like this. Wow. In fact, yesterday, Coach Ben mentioned something to that effect that we don't sell products. We sell Mm -hmm. solutions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's real. That's a better way of uh, putting it. Now, we have... uh, an FB live question, if it's okay. Yeah, sure. So from Joe Makino, what to do with personnel who doesn't follow communication protocols? Ito na. So I don't know um, mm-hmm. what, again, so there are so many different scenarios. Um, there mm-hmm. could be so many different reasons why somebody doesn't follow a communication protocol. Um and the, and there are always two sides to the story. Yes. I don't know what the entire story is. I don't know what that big um, big picture is. But um, to answer um, what I would do if somebody does not follow communication protocol, veers away from it, and distorts the message, mm-hmm. um, what I would do is I would set that person aside. Well, right, well 
if, if it were in person, I'd be talking mm-hmm. to them in person. Oh, yes. But right now, the only way that you can do it is you have to you have to call them. Either okay. call them, do a video call, um, ask them what their intention was. Because for all you know, it was it, it was a good intention, mm-hmm. but the execution was poor. It was poorly done, and because the execution was poorly done, chances are it 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 came out to be miscommunication for everybody. And again, I'm going back to when there's miscommunication or lack of communication, mm-hmm. it breeds uncertainty, it breeds fear, it breeds paranoia. And you just have to hammer, not hammer it down, hammer it down on the person, but you need to make sure that you help them understand why um, it's very important to follow communication protocol. Because again, your intention naman, as a leader mm-hmm. is to make sure that there that we are not breeding the uncertainty, that we're not breeding the fear and the paranoia in people. Mm-hmm. And um, very important, just make sure that you're, you know, setting that person aside, have that one on one with them. The first question really that you've got to ask is, um, what was your intention? Why? Why did you do uh, why did you decide or what led you to decide what you did? Be very careful with how you construct your questions. Kasi baka mamaya pag sinabi mong, um, when you say, why did you do what you did? It, it comes off as very accusing. Eh. Mm, and so pwedeng you, magmukhang probing. Pwede, pwede. Mm. And you can also say something like, um, what led you to decide mm-hmm. to do whatever mm. that was, right? And so when you come off as that, you come off from a place where you want to understand why that person is doing it. And then you go back to why do I need to talk to you about it right now? Because my intention here is is to make sure that nobody panics. And that's it. And if I also may add, maybe this person is not aware yes. of the protocol. Yes. Or, or thinks that He's obeying or following the rules that were set by the organization. So, balik tayo dun sa interpretation, ano? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's Ayan. true. Ito, related to sa next question. From Jean Tabora, I'm running a service business with staff mm-hmm. who are undergrads or... Ayoko yung gumamit ng word. Ayoko yung word na just eh. Mm. Say. Uh, undergrads or high school, high school graduates. graduates. Mm-hmm. Any additional techniques to successfully communicate with them? Speak in so their language. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> As speak in, their language. Speak their language. As in, um, I was in an organization where mm-hmm. um, we were doing a ton of e-learning sessions that were mm-hmm. all in English. Ang problema, um, probably 40% of the business um, in that site was probably uh, not as well-versed in the English language. And so because um, that skill set was not there, um, some of the e-learning courses that we did did not resonate with them. They could not absorb what they could mm-hmm. take away from it yeah. only because there was a language barrier. A barrier. And so the the one thing that we started exploring was we needed to make sure that, and it was very difficult to switch in e-learning courses from English to different dialects. Because mm-hmm. here in Pampanga especially, and I'm pretty sure that the that those who are in Pampanga in, the, in any of the chat rooms right now can can relate to this. It's a melting pot of so many dialects here. Eh? Mm-hmm. And so um, you're always bombarded by, um, sure, there's majority majority of the people who you hire could communicate and can understand, can comprehend in the English language. But there are those who you hire for their skills, um, mm-hmm. but not necessarily for their communication Communication skills, skills. right? Oh, oh. And so um, the one thing that I found that was... Uh, that was very uh, that resonated with this forty percent in the group was when we started translating in the dialects. Yeah. Dialects, not speak even so speak their, their language. Yes. Speak their language. Yes, because um, again, I mean, it sounds all of the questions. I'm very, I'm very passionate about all of the questions because say, right now, even I'm getting a refresher on the basic model of communication because. Um, if you have people who don't understand you, baka mame ang kailangan mo pang i-review. Am I speaking the... Should I be speaking in this language or should mm-hmm. I change it to make sure that people really understand it? Like right now, um, there's also sign language, right? So right now, in news clips, um, you don't just have the video and the audio, but you also need to make sure that there's an interpreter in mm-hmm. the corner or in or on the screen as well to interpret that message for those who use sign language. 
Um, so very simply put, and this can go on and on, but I think mm-hmm. the the most tactical thing to do is to speak their language. Thank you, uh, Ms. Roch. And I love the fact that people are, you know, owning it. They're owning it. They're oh, not yeah. putting the blame on, on their staff or in their people. So yes. if there's miscommunication, they are asking themselves, uh, is something yeah. wrong? Yes. That's a good thing. You always yeah, have to something. go back to, mm. and that's true, you have to go back to, mm. ano pa bang gawin? So is mm. there something wrong with how I'm communicating it? And oh. so you review. Kasi baka mamaya kaya, kaya hindi nila mag kasi ikaw pala yung, yung nagmi-miscommunicate. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. So from Wendy to Wasson, how do you effectively encourage the frontliners of a hotel to sustain mm-hmm. their motivation to go to work and service uh, our clients? I think related to sa sinabi mo kanina sa sales. Which one? <laughs> Yung why? Why? Why yes. are we doing this? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's why I smiled when I when I heard the question. Mm-hmm. Kasi um, you always go back to your why. Um, go back why? to your why. Yes, because um, if you think about it right now, mm-hmm. the hotel employees who are also considered as frontliners. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody who are considered mm-hmm. frontliners and doing your doing everything that you possibly can to keep people safe and at home. I just had to say that. Um, I I think you not I think, but I absolutely believe that um, the reason why you go out there is to make sure you. We all have one mission right now, eh? regardless mm-hmm. of what organization we're all in. Eh? We all have to help each other get through this crisis. We all don't, there's no vaccine available yet. There's no solution available yet. Mary. And so in whatever capacity that you were trained in, in whatever capacity that you can help people, um, you, that's your why. And so for, um, for hotel employees, your why, for me, ha, and this is just my interpretation of it from an outsider, but you mm. can have a totally different one. Mm. For me, hotel employees are there to help our frontliners from the hospitals. If you're a hotel right now that are servicing mm-hmm. all, of our, um, all of our frontliners and hospitals, you are also there to take care of those who are trying to take care of those who are um, ill right now. And so your purpose, your why right now is to take care of people. And that's just a very simple way of putting it. But again, you can create your own why and your own mission. And when they get to realize their impact, their role, their purpose, then they will not be working anymore for the money. Yes. It becomes more meaningful when you it understand why they're meaningful. doing it. Yes. Last two questions, mm-hmm. uh, Ms. Roch. Jen Kasupanan. Hi, Roch. I really like your topic. What is your advice to middle management? Who usually gets a difficult time managing the expectations of the upper management and the frontliners in communicating company BCP measures? Thank you. Um, very loaded question. I also know this person. <laughs> <laughs> we can have, have a chat a lot later. Of fans, huh? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but um, what is my advice to those caught in the middle um, between cascading the me- You're the channel. So in this case, um, you are the person cascading this message from leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, what works for me all the time is uh, what I've I've gotten so much from so many people mm-hmm. is uh, and so many experts during this these past couple of weeks was um, you have to stick to your facts. So regardless of regardless of uh, what the regardless of what leadership not even regardless you can't disregard what leadership says, mm-hmm. but make sure that you are you're extracting what those facts are and communicating it to your to your audience, to your teammates, to your employees. I'm going to go back to one of the things that I was talking about earlier for um, getting your, moving your team out of um, fallacy. <laughs> I forgot. Um, out of moving your team out of, gee, I even forgot. <laughs> Moving out, move your team out of the fairness fallacy. And mm. so um, moving your team out of the fairness fallacy, um, we, what we talked about there was you need to make sure that you are holding up that mirror in front of your, of your, of whoever you're talking with and mm. say, look, this is what we're dealing with right now. I don't like it. You don't like it. 
Um, and right now to make sure that you are safe, because again, you're, you're trying to tap into um, their needs, eh? their very basic physiological and safety needs to make sure that you are safe, that we can still secure your job. Here's what was decided um, to make sure that we keep that intact. Now, if you have any questions or if there's any concerns that you want to, um, to raise, I'm all ears and I can be that channel and let leadership know what your thoughts are on that. Beautiful, beautiful answer. I hope that answers. <laughs> and the last question, ito si Erica Ancheta. Ma'am, paano po maging effective ang communication kung ang iba po ay hindi po techy? Hindi, hindi techy type na tao. Lalo na po ngayon na hindi naman po lahat may social media. Thanks po. So I am assuming that this is a scenario where... A technical person? Yeah. Talks to a non-technical person. Who doesn't use Zoom, who doesn't use <laughs> Messenger, who doesn't use social media? Mm -hmm. Paano raw yung effective communication? Tagalogin mo, ha? Ah. Kasi ang tanong, Tagalog. Yes. Um, I was going to get... Ay, ito! Telepono ko. Um, so, pag ang tao walang Zoom, or let's say hindi siya techie, mm -hmm. go back to the basics pa rin. Nung, yung basics ba natin, nung time ba na wala tayong social media, walang Zoom, walang Facebook, walang Messenger, walang Instagram, walang walang wala. Ano ba yung mode of communication natin lagi? Landline. Ako naaalala ko pa nun, bless my parents, they're watching right now. Uh -huh. Bless my parents, they blessed me with my own landline phone. Wow. When I was younger. Yung um, rotary dial? Inabot, hindi, hindi mo inaabot yun. Ako, inaabot ko yun, ha? Inaabot ko yun. Inaabot ako. Sayo. Pero bata ang bata pa ako nun. Uh, okay. Pero, um, so I had my own landline phone and um, and so you go back to the basics. Kung may landline ka, may landline yung yung kakausapin mo, balikan mo. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yun yung babalikan mong practice. Kasi, um, ang isa sa mga natutunan ko, again, ikukote ko na naman si Chip Massey of, when, of the When and Now uh, agency mm -hmm. na crisis communication expert. Um, and si Simon Sinek, kung walang technology, ang kailangan, ang, the one thing that you can rely on is your voice. Mm -hmm. eh, hindi naman kailangan na mag-zoom eh. Hindi naman kailangan mag-messenger eh. Pwede naman na uh, na telepono lang, pwedeng landline, pwedeng mobile phone, di ba? Kung hindi man sila techy, hindi sila hindi ka makakapag, hindi ka makakagawa ng effective communication that way, then it's fine. Ang kailangan mo lang gawin, kausapin sila. And that's the reason why in the beginning portion of this entire webinar, I said it's time to have real conversations. Real conversations. Yes. And so, no matter what your channel is, kung Teki or non teki mm -hmm. and dami na, na wala na tayong excuse para para ano eh, mag communicate eh. kaila marami na tayong channels of communication so balikan mo landline or mobile phone i don't hindi ko alam kung may iba pa bang way morse code di ko alam. <laughs> <laughs> pero i'm sure may iba pang way for the not for those na hindi teki ayan maraming salamat mahusay sa pananagalog <laughs> Mahusay ka rin sa English. Sinubukan ko po. <laughs> You're a great communicator, Miss Roch. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for your time. Everybody, big hand for, uh, of course, Miss Roch Villo. Ayan na, clap, clap, clap. Sila, clap, clap, clap. Salamat po. Parting words. Ah, um, yes, I prepared parting words. Um, mm -hmm. Very quick lang naman to. Um, one thing that you... I, I checked this out, and you have to remember three things. Is it true? Is it kind? And is it helpful? Wow. That's how you take care of people. Now, again, you don't forget to take care of yourself by mm -hmm. asking for help when you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Ask for help so that you can take care of yourself too. Beautiful. Okay. True. Thank you. <laughs> kind and helpful. helpful. Yes. Three traits that we human beings should all have at all times. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And thank you for your generosity, Ms. Roch. Thank you for the participants. We're not done yet. Okay? And I'd like to call on our dear president, Madam Irish Malonda Samson, to thank our sponsors who made all this possible. Again, thank you, Ms. Roch.
I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was a great session. So thank you, Ms. Roch, for the tips on how we can communicate with, uh, with our employees, with our subordinates. Mm-hmm. Sir Howell, what is your key takeaway? Gusto ko yung fairness fallacies na sinabi niya na people are always saying na it's not fair, it's not fair, nothing is fair. So ang maganda na ginawa ni uh, Ms. Roch is sinabi niya if, if nothing is fair, at least be a person with compassion who communicates with trust and and be respectful and that's the that's my takeaway wow that's great to hear well for me what struck me most is the uh, emotional contagion of the default leader so oh. in communicating with your subordinates though though uh, you're feeling anxiety as well because of mm-hmm. these uncertain times mm-hmm. you still have to be calm and confident and doon, doon mo maibibigay, maire-relay yung message. Okay? So, ang laki talaga ng role ng leaders, no? Yes, indeed. So, Madam President, ang laki ng role mo. Thank you for making this happen. Again, shout out to our dear CEO, Sir Jem Matienzo, for making this happen. And thank you again to our resource person ngayon. Thank you, Sir Howell. I'll be seeing you tomorrow morning. See you tomorrow um, morning in the afternoon for HR Summit. Okay. So, guys, this is not yet the end of our e-learning session. I have great news still for you. So, uh, please allow me to acknowledge our win-win sponsors. We would like to thank the following win-win partners. Our official media partner, Art Plus Magazine. Digital media partners, Focus Media. Thank you to Globaltronics. CD Advertising Ventures, Outcome, Elevate Media. For win-win partners, thank you to Brother, Faber Castell, Gluta C, Moringa O2, KFC, Mr. Donut, Tokyo Tokyo, Lotus Biscoff. Thank you to Boss Job. Cert Technology Inc., Finma Properties, Perajet, Ilawi, Korea. Thank you to Kittleson Carpo Consulting, Enchanted Kingdom, Disperse, and Cosmotech Philippines Inc. And for those of you who want to place your ads here, advertise your company services. Um, have a brand exposure to thousands of viewers, please do email us at marketing at arriva.com.ph. Again, it's marketing at arriva.com.ph. And don't forget, forget to like our Facebook page. It's Arriva Academy Philippines, Inc. Please do scan this QR code. It will be directed to our Facebook page. So don't forget to like us on Facebook. For those of you who missed watching this e-learning session and would like to watch the replay of our previous e-learning sessions please do subscribe at our youtube channel it's arriva academy again it's arriva academy and arriva talks so please subscribe for our upcoming online learning sessions this will be tomorrow uh, i'm sorry on friday april 24 we have invited mr arian tan from singapore he will be discussing how to be productive when you work from home. And on Saturday, we have invited Mr. Chinkitan, the sought-after motivational speaker. Join us on Saturday, Manage Money in a Crisis, Strategies to Manage Your Money Better. And we would like to invite the HR professionals, uh, people managers, HR executives in our first ever HR HR Virtual Summit PH 2020. Guys, this will be uh, starting tomorrow. For the first series, we have invited Mr. Dixon Tang from Singapore. He will be discussing creative human capital in the aftermath of coronavirus. This will be at 10.30 to 12 noon. And back to back with, of course, our very own coach Pia Nazareno Acevedo. She will be discussing emotional resilience strategies during the COVID-19 crisis. Her slot is at 3 to 4.30 p.m. And this is the great news. We have invited the father of modern HR. This will be the second series of our HR 
virtual summit. Um, the father of modern HR, Dr. Dave Ulrich, will be discussing HR's role in crisis, the essential role of HR during the COVID-19 pandemic. His session it will be at 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And in the afternoon, we have invited the global top leader, Mr. Ron Thomas. He will be discussing HR leadership in a time of crisis. His slot is 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. So don't forget to register. Please do um, uh, visit our website. It's www.ariva.com.ph to register, okay? And this will be on May 7th. We have Mr. Jonathan Yabot again. Online selling from home, how to use FB, IG, and LinkedIn for your business. So please do register. Also, on May 14, we have leading a work from home workforce, how to manage and develop remote teams. This will be discussed by none other than Mr. Jonathan Yabot again. And for those of you who want to have a customized e-learning session, invite Ms. Roach, invite Ms. Abigail, our Arriva partner speakers. Please do email me at irish.arivaacademy at gmail.com or you may call me at 0916-695-4418. And that's it. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hope to see you tomorrow on our first ever HR virtual summit. Don't forget to register. In, and this is Irish Malanda Samson giving you in Arriva. It's all about being better, be safe, and stay home. Bye-bye.